Hi everyone, it's Daphne Walbridge here from the First Year Principal. Welcome to today's coaching lesson. So I help first year principals and aspiring principals not only survive but thrive as new educational leaders. And I do this by focusing on three key pillars, conscious leadership, creativity, and connection. So this month, the month of September, we are focusing on productivity and how to maximize the time we have to focus on key projects, what will really move the needle forward for our schools and our communities. So if this is something that you feel you need help with, type in a one in the comment box below and let me know if this resonates with you. Also, don't forget to let me know where you're tuning in from because I love to see who out there I'm reaching. I'd love that because our messages seem to expand, um, you know, throughout the, 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 the country and uh, even in the world for that matter. So let me know where you're listening from. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is talk about the importance of focusing on what is really, really critical. And there is a, an easy strategy you can use to figure out what you need to keep and what you need to basically avoid. And to do this, I am going to share with you a few slides to really drive home the message. So here we have the three Ds. You need to remember these three Ds if you're going to make it and survive and thrive as a new school leader. So what am I talking about? Well, the first one is to ditch, get rid of, remove from your pile anything that does not align with your most important goals and strategies. So if you're a principal, chances are you're going to have a, a plan you need to focus on to make sure your school moves forward. So it's a, it's a um, you know, there's different names for them, but basically it's an overarching strategic plan you have in place for your school with various goals, objectives, and strategies to meet these goals along with timelines. So anything that doesn't really align with your plan should either um, be removed from your agenda or given to someone else. And we're going to talk about that later. So it's really, really mindful. For example, sometimes you're going to be asked to fill out surveys. Is that really essential? Is it necessary? Now, if it's mandated from your board, obviously you need to, you know, you need to, to follow through with, with what they're asking of you. But um, often, some, sometimes things are going to come onto your desk and you're going to have to really evaluate whether or not you want to partake in an activity or get your school involved in something that might not align with your overarching plan and vision. So be really, really mindful. And that's on a macro scale, even on a micro scale in your own life. Okay, you need to figure out you know, do I really, really need to do this? Do I need to sign up for another Facebook group, you know, with somebody selling something else that I know I won't be interested in selling, but it's just going to, you know, creep up into my news feeds and it's going to be another notification on my Facebook feed and that's going to distract me. You know what I mean? So it, it can also be on a micro level. What can you ditch, remove and dump so you don't have to fill your mind, your precious headspace with with things and, and, and you know, tasks that really uh, are not that useful for you, okay? So I invite you to, maybe you might, might wanna write this down right now, you know, take a good inventory of every aspect of your life, not just your career, but also, you know, your social media is a big one. You know, how many groups and pages do you don't even follow anymore and can kind of be a waste of time for you and, and, and cluttering your headspace? So um, the same thing with your, your inbox, your emails. How many emails you, you never open because you've subscribed to something a few months ago and now you know that's passed, it's expired, and it's not really of interest to you. So you can unsubscribe. 
uh, memberships and things like that. Even physically in your own environment, in your office or your home, things that no longer serve you and that are taking up physical and mental space and creating anxiety and overwhelm should all be released. Okay, so this is a long process. If you want to do a huge overhaul in your life, uh, you might have heard of Marie Kondo. She is the kind of holistic spiritual expert in decluttering. All of her books are great. Um, basically, you need to have, I guess, an emotional, spiritual connection with something. If not, you get rid of it. Anyway, you can read it. You can see how you feel. Marie Kondo is the author. Um, and uh, just kind of do an overhaul of in what, what you don't need in your life because ditching it, dumping it is strategy number one. Okay, moving on to strategy number two is to delegate. Uh, this, you need to become an expert in delegating if you're going to be a principal because you cannot do everything by yourself. You're going to need to find, remember we're talking about building a strong team just last month we were talking about um, building that strong, solid team. And to do so uh, is important because you're going to need to delegate tasks according to people's strengths. And that's also a great sign of leadership because your role as a leader is to tap into those strengths and give those people a sense of responsibility and ownership of different tasks and projects. So the thing that you need to realize though is when you do delegate, you're also releasing control, which is important because that means you have faith that the project, the assignment will be properly fulfilled and that the outcome will come out, you know, you'll have a good outcome. And also you need to release your need for perfectionism. Good enough is good enough. And when you adopt the, the need to release control and to be perfect, you are going to not only get more done, that al which aligns uh, with, your, with your overarching plan, but you'll have more headspace, more energy to focus on other things, your health, your family, your hobbies, your career, your education, your growth. So it's, a real, it's very important to adopt this mindset. So you can start small, but it's important to start delegating. And every opportunity, every task that comes across your desk or into your inbox, you need to ask yourself, do I need to do this? Is this something I can ditch? Or is this something I need to delegate? And if so, whom will be the person? You know, who will, who will receive this task? And do I have confidence in that person? And am I able and willing to release control and the, the need for it to be perfect? Okay, so that is number two, delegate. Number three, you're going to have to take action. So some things you need to do. And you need to identify from day one which tasks are critical for you to do. Okay, so it's kind of like the 80-20, and we're going to talk about that later on in this series. But you need to focus on the critical 20% tasks that will um, sh give you the most results. So it's a bit of a spoiler alert. You, you know what's coming down the pipe. But what can, can only be done by you? And this can also relate to your personal life as well. So you know that attending a child's recital, you need to do it. You can't just, you know, farm that out to someone, uh, even with a doctor's appointment. But do you need to pick up the dog food? Do you need to, um, you know, go grocery shopping? No, but some things you have to do. You need to monitor your school. You need to be present in the hallways. Um, you need to send out surveys and read those surveys and meet people and talk about the responses and then act and actually mobilize change so people feel empowered. So your task, the, the tasks that you keep on board are critical to the well-being of your staff, your students, your school, your culture, and of course the performance, the academic performance of your school. So always keep that in mind. And of course, these are high priority tasks which must align with your school's overarching plan, strategic plan. Okay, so that is very important. Those are the three Ds. Next, you need to, now, now we're done the three Ds, right? You either ditch, you either delegate, 
or you either do it yourself, depending, and that'll be the urgency. But also, another thing you need to realize, this is the second point here. So the first point, I want to talk about the 3Ds, and now the second point I want to talk about is to take your time. Multitasking in the role of a principal is like suicide. You cannot do it. You're going to create so many mistakes and so many hurdles for yourself that it's, it's really not going to be of service to you. So if you're a multitasker, let me know in the comment box below. I want to know if this resonates with you. Do you think that multitasking will actually save time? I want to know. Write that down right now. Yes or no. And of course, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Multitasking does not help you do things faster. In fact, it impedes on productivity. And a 2009 study from Stanford University in California um, really confirms this. And they say that it makes people dumber because their faculties are weakened. They cannot focus on uh, two or three things at the same time without them being affected. More mistakes are created. And as a result, more time is wasted correcting those mistakes. So take your time, do one thing at a time. So if you're focusing on emails, focus on emails. If you're walking around the, the hallway to connect with students and teachers and staff, do that. Okay, if you're going into rooms in the classrooms to take photos for your um, your Instagram stories and connect with kids, then just do that one thing at a time and take your time to avoid mistakes. If you're working on, um, you know, correcting some um, report cards, then just do that. Okay, one thing at a time. This will ensure that you make less mistakes and as a result will deliver higher quality work in less time. Okay, so just to recap today's productivity hacks, I showed you two concepts. The first one was to make sure that you follow the three Ds. And um, I'm just going to stop the share here so you can see me. Uh, the three Ds, so you, you, need, you need to ditch, you need to delegate, and you need to do. And I know you, if you're having a hard time with the control issue and the perfectionistic side of yourself, you're, you're going to have to release that. Do some journaling, do whatever you need to take to do what you have to do to, to, to let that go because just having more time for yourself is like incredible. So, either, okay, those are the three Ds. And taking your time, do not multitask because the more you multitask, the weaker you're going to be mentally and the more mistakes you're going to create. And as a result, the more time you're going to be wasting fixing those mistakes. Okay, so I would love to know how this, these two hacks, these two tricks or strategies landed with you. Let me know what your thoughts are. Okay, down below. I want to know, um, you can talk about are you, are you uh, a control freak? Are you somebody who uh, are you uh, somebody who's obsessed with perfection? Are you afraid of making mistakes? I'd like to know what your thoughts are with this. And um, if you know somebody who needs this training, make sure you send them over this way. Send them over to this page so they can enjoy these lessons and uh, maybe learn something and put insight into action. Okay, so that is all for today. Thank you for joining me and I can't wait to connect with you next week where I'll be sharing two more strategies to help you make the most of your time. Bye for now.